Hi, and welcome back to another waveform video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the MIDI filter. I'm demonstrating this in waveform 11.5, but this was released earlier. I also want to point out that this is a pro feature, so you would need the pro edition of waveform to have the MIDI filter. Now, the MIDI filter by its name might not be apparent what it does, and it comes up with a little keyboard and it is a MIDI effect. So if you look at the example here, I have a MIDI filter on this line here where I've got a piano and a reverb. So here is the MIDI filter plugin, and you can see that it has a keyboard on it and a zone. And essentially what it does is allows you to pass MIDI notes across a zone, allowing you to create regions that you can play different instruments. Initially here, I'm going to show this with some MIDI tracks. Later, I'm going to show you with a keyboard how to set up a keyboard split using this along with a rack setup. So to get started, I'm going to demonstrate our example here. So I'll turn off the MIDI filter, and this is what we're starting with, which is a single piano track and the drum beat, which is from the step clip video that I did a few days ago. So what we're hearing is just simply left and right hands on a piano. So the first thing I'm going to do is to filter out the low notes. And I've done that here by dragging in a range. So I'm going to enable this MIDI filter plugin. And by the way, if you're looking for the MIDI filter plugin, you go to the plugin selector and under the waveform plugins under utility, you'll find the MIDI filter down here in the MIDI section. So that's where you find it if you need to put it in. When you first put it in, it will look like this. So the region or the range of notes that will be passed through the filter is the entire 88 key keyboard or the full range of available MIDI notes. So to create a, essentially allow the higher register notes to pass, I'll adjust this with that playing. I'll also open this up a little bit so you can see that there's sort of a bass line in here on the left hand. So we'll play back and I'll adjust that until I start to filter out these lower notes. All right, you can see as the notes play, they trigger on this virtual keyboard so that you can see which notes have been played. So now that I've done that, what I did earlier, and I'll just repeat it here for you, is I copied this entire chord progression to another track. And the way I did that is just hold down Option and drag it to another track. You could do the same thing if you're on a different keyboard by holding down Alt and dragging it to another track or cut and paste or something else like that. So on this one, I'm going to use another MIDI filter. I'll unmute this. And I have this sort of bass synth sound on this one. So I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm going to allow those bass notes to play on the second one. While I'm doing that, I'll go ahead and mute this uh, original track. All right, so you can already kind of see where I'm going with this. This is a very quick way to split high and low registers out of a MIDI chord progression to quickly create the difference between a top line and a bass line. So I'll go ahead and enable the top track, and you can see that by now using two instruments, basically the same MIDI file, I get more of an arrangement. So 
So that's a really cool trick. Again, this is in the Pro Edition, so you don't have this feature if you're running the free or the OEM version. Now I also threw on an arpeggiator, and with an arpeggiator, we can just quickly now build out something even more interesting from a pretty static chord progression. That's using the 16th note clock, and then I've also got it going in the alternate two style pattern on the arpeggiator. You could change this to one of the other ones. So that's another one of our MIDI tools that we have available in the Pro Edition is the MIDI Arpeggiator, which is a lot of fun. I've done a few videos on this in the past, and I always get a big kick out of playing around with the MIDI Arpeggiator because you get some really cool results with that. So if we want to play from a controller and get left and right hands on different instruments, then we can do that with a rack. So I'm going to create another track here. Just click plus here at the bottom new feature and add a track. And this track will be for our split keyboard. Another new feature in 11.5, so I right click here and do rename track. So there's our split keyboard. The next thing I'll do is start a new blank rack. So we'll add it plug in to left. We'll go to racks and we'll do create a new empty rack and we'll open the rack. And we need two instruments. So I'm just going to drag them from my other project here. So we'll take our piano, just say auto connect is fine for that. I'll take collective, which is our bass sound. And then the MIDI filter that we did before will go up here. We'll disconnect this and reconnect it up to MIDI filter. Go from MIDI filter back into our piano plugin. And then our other MIDI filter from the baseline, we'll bring that in here. Now we connect it up to the same input. So if I set up the, this to have my keyboard playing, right now you can see that I have the filter coming in into my piano and then to the out. It's going through this MIDI filter. So down here it stops playing. And I could move that range a little bit higher, I think I will, because it's a very small keyboard. We'll, we'll set the range to cut off right here at this C. And then everything below, I want to play into the other one. So this is the basic setup for a keyboard split. I'll wire this up, the MIDI channel, and then I'll wire the output of this up to my left and right outputs. Now I'm going to tune this MIDI filter for the bass side. And you can see it starts cutting off here, but I want it I want it to play up to this note here, so I'll expand the range. And you can see here's my my switchover. I've got piano up here. And I've got the bass down here. So the opportunity using this within a rack, you can create very complex setups as you can imagine with a three-way split or maybe layering something across splits and having numerous virtual instruments inside there. But this is the basic way MIDI filter works. So this is another use for the MIDI filter when you're working with drums. I'm working with step clip programmed drums in this case, but if you had MIDI drums, you could do the same thing. What I want to do is isolate the snare sound. Of course, you could isolate the kick, snare, or anything else for two reasons. One would be to quickly convert it to audio or to pass that to a different virtual instrument, which is what I'm going to do in this example. So to get started, I'm just going to duplicate my entire track. So I select the track here, hit D for duplicate, and now I have a second one. To keep it a little more clear, I'll just change the color here a little bit. And on this one, it will be our isolated snare. And to do that, I'll go here, 
right click, add plugin to left, waveform utility, and then down here where it says MIDI filter, we add the MIDI filter. I'm gonna play back and then narrow the range until I hear only the snare. All right, I hear only this snare. You could also see that only this snare is being triggered here. Now I'm gonna to change to a different drum instrument. So I'll right click on this and do replace this plugin. And then from here, I'm going to use the MT Power Drum Kit. So now I can reinforce my original beat with that hit from that acoustic snare. So I'll unmute this. And if I wanted to use that for effect, maybe I want to put a lot of reverb on there, I can go in here, add a plug in to the left, pick up the waveform effects, reverb, and maybe as a mixing effect, I want to just put a lot of reverb on just this alternate sound. So that's an example of a way to put an effect on just the snare, triggering a different sample. And I haven't done any MIDI or step clip editing. I just use that filter. So if I wanted to quickly render that drum as a trigger to an audio track, first I'm gonna mute my reverb here by disabling reverb. I selected the reverb, I press F, which is how you enable or disable a plugin. I'll hit B which opens the browser. Click on the top of the clip. This would work for a MIDI clip or step clip. And then in the browser, I'm on the Actions tab, and you'll see the options here, Render Clip. And I'm going to choose Render the Selected Clip and Replace It. And that gives me this dialog box to pass through the plugins, which I need to do because without that, I won't have the, the drum sound plugin or the MIDI filter. So we'll do render, and I've done the rendering, replace it. I'll push up the gain a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. And now I've got that rendered as an audio clip. Now I've got my MIDI stuff going on here, so to hear that, I'm just going to quickly move it to a different track. If you had a pretty simple step clip like I just showed, you could go through, isolate each one, and then quickly convert these to audio. So the MIDI filter is very simple, but it's a tool the pro user can use, particularly in rack setups, to create more complex keyboard zoning setups. But you can also use it as a production tool to filter out different things, to quickly create splits, to create separate out the bass line and the top line, or to isolate drum hits, as I showed in this example. I'm sure there's many other things you can do with it as well, but those are the most obvious applications of the MIDI filter. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to support all the new content that's coming soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.